I love my whole cast. I love being around them. I love working with them. I love hanging out with them. I'm like, let's do it again, you know? I don't think necessarily everybody gets to have the experience that I was like so lucky to have where like I would be excited to wake up and, and work with them, but then I'd also be excited to rap because we'd get to go and hang out. So it was like, it was like camp meets getting to make um, art with your best friends. Paul is like, you know, we wrote the script together, we produced it together, it's, it's our baby. We don't have a real baby, so this is our baby, um, except for instead of like gestating for nine months, it was like two years. So it came out big, you know, big baby. Um, you know, I, I think that what's exciting for me is that people are gonna get to see him in a way that they haven't necessarily seen him before. This is like a character that's actually most like him in real life, and so we were able to write for him in a way that we're not usually able to do. Um, and, you know, he's like just so genius physically and he gets to have like such vulnerability in this in this movie, which is exciting for me to, to for the world to see. And I mean, you know, I love him. How funny is Colton? Colton can do so much with so little. It's like unbelievable, literally with dialogue and clothing. Like he is so fun to be around. It was such a joy to have his vibe on set. Like he was like just such a, a, a ray of sunshine every day and had so much fun. We had so much fun with him and like audiences like he, he like destroys like he, the littlest things he does like gets the audience like riled up. It's so great. He's He's a star. Ryan, like it's, it's crazy that like Ryan is, like I hope that people appreciate how much he's actually added to this movie because he is so gifted physically at like playing dead that like the dedication it took for him to still continue to, first of all, not blink. He like barely blinked at all. I had to once play somebody who was dead and I constantly blinked and they were like, you can't blink. And I was like, it's really hard. And so I was like, oh, this guy's gonna have a tough time, but he was so good at it. Like, and you know, the girls are like running around him they're jumping on top of him, like throwing stuff on him and he just never moved. And like the amount of mental fortitude it takes to do that. I, I it's, I mean, we are truly, he is like the unsung, hero of this movie and he's also so sweet and so lovely and so easy to be around that was a um, really great vibe to have around yeah. and also he would help Kate sometimes with her Australian accent <laughs> which is great to have an on-set uh, consultant <laughs> they were so Fun. They were like totally down. They showed up like excited to like just figure it out with us. Actually, that first joke that Demi has, which is um, let me put something on, and she puts on sunglasses because she's um, topless, sunbathing topless. Um, she came up with that joke. She came on set and pitched it, and we were like, that is so funny. And um, Ty is like, I mean, you can tell that he is just like such incredible mastery over his comedic instrument because, like, you know, you would throw anything at him, and he could just turn it into like the perfect Pietro version of it. Like he really is, I mean, he, they are also people that I'm like, can we do a spinoff with them? Like, what else can we do? Like, how can I be with them again? I love them. And they were also really, it was important for all of us that it was like, not just like a one dimensional, like, oh, like hot neighbors, but it was like, you know, a couple that was all about consent and they were all about, um, you know, pleasuring, whoever wanted pleasure in the situation and it made it for us more than just kind of like a a joke it made it just like kind of a couple that you're like if you saw them and they were like hitting on you you'd be like yeah I'm definitely gonna hook up with them you know and yeah I would so <laughs> hope you're cool with that <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, my grandmother plays Betty, who is one, one half of the couple that Zoe and Alana get the burner phone from at the 7-Eleven. My grandmother, I made her audition twice. So I didn't just give it to her, there was no nepotism involved. I made her come in for a pre-read and for a producer session. And she's really, really funny. And it was really fun to say, okay, grandma, can you do it again? Can you, but she was a total pro. She hit her marks every time. She reset her props. She made sure to like, she would, you know, ask for hair when she knew that her hair was like falling a little bit. So it was like really fun to have her on set. And she's, she's, I think, I think I found, I think I found a new talent.